Hi, I'm Andy and welcome to my channel about crypto. In this video, I'll be talking about CoinGecko and how to use information on the website to find different coins and find their potential uh, for investment. Okay, so let's go to CoinGecko.com. It's one of few websites that provide information about cryptocurrencies. Another one you may want to use is CoinMarketCap. Personally, I prefer CoinGecko, but they are largely the same. It's just personal preference which one you will use. Okay, so let's look at what sort of information we can find on this website. We can see that there are over 8,000 coins listed on it. So probably pretty much every coin you can imagine, or vast majority of them at least. Um, we can see the market cap of cryptocurrencies as a whole. So at the moment that's roughly 1.6, 1.7 trillion dollars and it's going down a little bit or when it went down slightly in the last 24 hours. We can see the, the volume of transactions over the last 24 hour period and the market dominance of Bitcoin and Ether. So at the moment, Bitcoin is 44.5% of the whole cryptocurrency market. As you can see here, there's market cap of Bitcoin, which is $744 billion. And that's 44.5% of 1.6 trillion. And Ether is 18.4%. These numbers are quite important because Bitcoin's lower um, market dominance indicates that we can be approaching or we are in altcoin season. Basically, as Bitcoin's value goes up, eventually people start taking out profits from Bitcoin and that money then goes into Ether Ether's market dominance increases and Bitcoin, Bitcoin's market dominance goes down and eventually money from Ether pulls into other altcoins and smaller, smaller um, market cap altcoins, meme coins and NFTs and whatever is the most popular thing at a particular point in time. So generally, if Bitcoin's market dominance drops down to 30 something percent, uh, we are in the altcoin season, so we can expect lower cap altcoins to increase more in price. If Bitcoin's dominance is quite high, let's say 60 percent, 70 percent, uh, that means that the majority of money is locked in in Bitcoin itself. And whatever is not in Bitcoin is probably largely in Ethereum, a few other big cap uh, coins. So that means that there will be very little movement in terms of increase of price of uh, smaller cap coins. And we can also see F gas, gas price here at the moment that's 41 Gwei. Um, however, I find that sometimes a bit inaccurate and I prefer to use gas now, which is a website, uh, but also um, but it's also a browser extension and that gives far more accurate prices. And as you can see, they're actually quite a bit different than CoinGecko, but as you can see, I had to refresh it. It doesn't it doesn't update automatically, uh, which actually is something quite important. You may find that when the prices are changing very rapidly, uh, let's say there is a sudden market crash or a particular altcoin suddenly becomes really popular and a lot of people are buying it. Uh, this may not be very accurate. So you then may want to check the price on the exchange or on a website such as TradingView, which gives you price at this point in time uh, because CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap they have slight delay in updating their prices. Okay, so here we see all the coins uh, listed by their market cap. When comparing different coins it's really important to look at the market cap rather than the price because the price doesn't really give us much information. If we look at the top five coins, let's exclude Tether because that's just a stable coin so it's its value is always one or around one. We can see that we have Bitcoin at almost $40,000, Ether at $2,600, Binance coin at $335, and Cardano at $1.33. I mean, these prices seem to be all over the place. But what's important is the market cap, which is the price multiplied by the supply. So, for example, if we look at Bitcoin, it's $40,000 per coin, give or take, uh, but the supply of it, it's only 18.7 million. If we then compare it to say Ether, 
that has circulating supply of almost 117 million. So that's considerably more. And then something like, say, Cardano, that's 32 billion in circulating supply. So looking at those numbers, it's quite clear that there is just so much more. I mean, that's like 2000 times more Cardano than Bitcoin, if my math is right. So it would be ridiculous to expect the price of Cardano to be anywhere near the price of Bitcoin because there is just so much, so, so much more Cardano in circulation than there is Bitcoin. And this is really important when we try to estimate what potential a particular coin may have uh, in terms of increasing its value. You may sometimes find claims that Cardano will go up to $100 or $1,000. Well, is it possible? If you look purely at the prices, you could think, well, if Ether can go to 2,600 and it was around 4,500 before, let alone Bitcoin being, I don't know, 40 or 60,000, well, why Cardano cannot reach $100 or $1,000, right? If we look at the price, yeah, that, that could potentially make sense. But if we look at the market cap, that gives us the full story because that essentially gives us an idea of how much more money we have to be invested in that particular token in order for it to achieve a certain price. So at the moment, Cardano's market cap is $42 billion, 43 almost. In comparison, Bitcoin is almost 750 billion and the total market cap of cryptocurrencies as a whole is 1.6 trillion. I mean, let's put it into, into context. The global supply of gold is roughly $11 trillion. The most valuable company, Apple, is at the moment 2.4 trillion, so roughly one and a half times more than crypto market as a whole at this point in time. Earlier this year, cryptocurrencies as a whole were actually worth around two and a half um, trillion dollars, so roughly similar value. And then we have something like S&P 500 index, so 500 biggest companies in the United States, which currently has a market cap of roughly $36 trillion. And those companies include, if we just look at the top 10, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Tesla, Berkshire Hathaway, Nvidia, and on and on. So essentially this index is approximately 70 to 80% of the total US stock market capitalization. So that's a huge amount of global economy, um, essentially in those $36 trillion. Which gives us a good reference point what's possible in terms of achieving different prices. So again, if we go back to Cardano and the potential for that price to increase, for Cardano to go up to $100, it would have to increase approximately 75 times in price. That would then give it market cap, well, 75 times 42 billion, that's approximately 3.2, 3.3 trillion dollars. So that's actually twice the current market cap of all cryptocurrencies, or roughly one and a half times of, um, no, sorry, or quite a bit more than the value of Apple at the moment. It's a lot of money, but it's not completely impossible. A lot of, um, you may find that a lot of people are expecting that cryptocurrency market as a whole will reach market cap of around 10 to 12 trillion dollars at the end of this market cycle, which is likely to be some at some point in 2023. So could Cardano hit $100 within that cycle? Probably not. At the moment, it's only about 2.5% of the whole cryptocurrency market. It's realistic for it to hit somewhere between $8 to $10, maybe a bit more, depending how things will develop. Um, but $100 would be a bit of a push. And $1,000, it's pretty much completely ludicrous anytime in in the foreseeable future because that would essentially require it to go up to roughly 32 trillion dollars so basically cardano on its own would have to be worth almost as much as the whole s p 500 index 
which is just not going to happen. I mean, it may happen at some point in the future, but yeah, certainly not anytime soon. So it was a quite long explanation, but I hope it makes some sense. Um, if not, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to, to make a separate video about it. Uh, but let's look now at digging into some information in, in CoinGecko to find potential um, altcoins that may be worth investing into. So if we look, well, let's just look for a start at Bitcoin. Often it makes sense to compare different things to Bitcoin to give us some sort of idea of where we are. So if we start with the information about Bitcoin, we can see its price, of course. Um, we can see how the price changed in the last 24 hours. Well, the range of prices and roughly where it sits at the moment. We can see its market cap, 24 hour trading volume. The higher the volume, the more liquid the asset is, the, the easier it is to sell it or, or buy it. You may find that certain uh, coins have hardly any trading volume. So it means that if you have loads of that coin, I don't know, maybe you bought it at very early stage or you took part in ICO or something, um, you may have quite a lot of funds locked in it, but it may be quite difficult to shift it. Um, we see it's circulating supply. We have here some additional inf information such as websites, uh, supported wallets, communities and so on. And then of course we have the price chart. By default that's 24 hours, but we can select different periods uh, to give, give us an idea how the price changes over time. And here on the side we can see again price, market cap, market uh, cap dominance, trading volume, 24 hour and 7 day low and high. And quite important one is all time high and all time low. Especially all time high is a pretty good indicator because it gives us an idea, especially with coins we are not quite familiar with, how high it went in the past. So, so say you, you bought Bitcoin in early May at around $16,000 or so. You know that the all time high was only about four or 5,000 more. So you know that you're buying it at a pretty high price. At the moment, when the price is around 40,000, well, it's still not exactly cheap, but you know that it already reached 64, 65K before, which gives you an idea that, well, it should hit that price again. And of course it should go much, much higher than before. It gives you an idea how the current price compares to the potential of what, what that coin can achieve. There are also here exchanges where you can trade it and some additional information below. So now let's look at some different coins. Okay, so now let's look at some different coins. Let's pick something, let's say OcamFi. I quite like this project, so why not? Okay, so this particular coin has market cap of only 66 million. We'll talk about it in a second. 24 hour trading volume is only $653,000. So there aren't many trades happening at the moment, but it's a small cap altcoin. But at this point in time, we are in quite bearish market. So vast majority of money, vast majority of trades are happening uh, with Bitcoin, Ethereum, sort of top 10, top 20 coins. And of course, stuff that's popular at the moment, such as NFTs. But I wouldn't expect most altcoins to have much volume because essentially people are not trading them at the moment. They are too much of a risk. It's hard to predict what will happen with them. We have the website here. The important bit, which I mentioned in my previous video, is the contract address, which you can use uh, in MetaMask or Uniswap. Um, so you make sure that you're actually buying the correct token. Communities, these are quite good to explore, to see what's happening. I mean, everyone is familiar with Bitcoin or Ether, but with, but with smaller cap coins, it, it might be quite difficult to find information about it. So you should go to the website and read the white paper, find out more about the project, why, why it exists, what, what's its point, whether it has, it has much potential or not see how active the communities are, see um, how easy it is to reach the development team. 
um, f ask questions if you want. You also do, you can see here also how many people like the, uh, this product. It's a small thing, but it gives you some sort of idea whether it's popular or not, and what sort of potential it may have. So, so yeah, the price has been relatively stable, nothing crazy. Market cap dominance is 0% because of course it's a very small cap um, coin. Uh, because of course the market cap is really small, so it's pretty much irrelevant you know, when comparing to the market as a whole. All time high was $17.55, that was three months ago. So at the moment it's less than half of that price. So it has quite a bit of potential to go up. It's a launchpad type project on um, Cardano blockchain. So as Cardano is being developed and smart contracts are deployed on the mainnet, this has huge potential to grow. So it should quite easily go back to that previous price and hopefully much higher than that. So it's actually one of the projects I'm quite bullish on because I think it has a lot of potential. And if we scroll down, we can see on what exchanges you can trade it. So actually the most popular is, is Uniswap. It, you can see here that it's not tradable on any of the main exchanges such as Coinbase or Binance. And that's another good information because it means that as this coin goes on those main exchanges, the price may go up because it becomes much more available to many people. Not everyone knows how to set up MetaMask and how to use Uniswap. Not everyone wants to pay fees uh, involved in using um, the centralized exchange such as Uniswap. So as coins hit those main exchanges, the prices tend to go up because essentially they're becoming much, much more accessible. Um, so again, that's another reason why the price of this particular coin may go up. And let's go back to the market cap. So as you can see here, it's only 66 million. So it's essentially the exact opposite of the coins we were looking at before, like Bitcoin or Cardano. While Cardano would require billions of dollars to even double in price. I mean, at the moment it was what? The market cap was, I think, $42 billion. So for it to double in price, it would require another $42 billion uh, to be invested in it. Something like this only would require another 66 million for the price to double. Uh, that's almost nothing comparing to, to Cardano. That's why smaller cap coins are much more volatile because even a single high net worth individual or, or an investment fund or organization can quite easily um, manipulate the price by, by investing a few million in this particular coin, you can quite easily shift the price by at least a few percent. And of course, that change in price will also have a knock-on effect as more and more people will likely buy or sell, depend depending which way the price goes. While putting a few million in, let's say, Cardano, doesn't, it's not going to make any noticeable difference because the overall market cap is just so much bigger. So this is yet another reason why it's important to look at the market cap rather than the price alone because this gives you much better idea of where that price is likely to go in the future or how quickly it's going to change. And finally, well, so you have all this information here, but how then you decide which projects are worth investing into? So like I said, just try to gather as much information as possible. Read the white paper, reach out to the team, see how active the communities are. Basically, what decides on the success of a particular project or not is the quality of the project plus plus the marketing behind it. If you're interested in crypto, I'm sure you're aware how much difference can make just one tweet from Elon Musk about Dodge or Bitcoin or whatever. Even Bitcoin with its huge market cap can move quite a bit in price just because of one person, very powerful person, but still just one person. So it's important to get an idea of what, uh, what sort of support uh, that particular token has. You can also use multiple websites to, to find out more about it or, and find out what's, what's happening in the, in the near future. Uh, one good website to check on a regular basis is Cointelegraph, where you have a lot of information about what's, um, what's happening at the moment in the crypto. Uh, then we have CoinMarketCal, 
which is essentially a calendar of various upcoming events. Then of course you have Twitter, Reddit, Telegram, Discord, um, YouTube, and so on so on. The important thing is that you don't follow just one particular website or one particular YouTuber. Um, because you should diversify your sources for, of information. Um, especially in crypto, there is plenty of misinformation, there's plenty of uh, rumors. You probably heard about FUD and FOMO, fear, uncertainty, fear, uncertainty and doubt, and fear of missing out, basically depending on the information that are um, being spread. The prices, the people behavior will change and the price is likely to go up or down. It's things such as shutting down exchanges or um, increased regulation. Yeah, anything that could have negative impact on crypto prices. It's likely to then convince people that, oh, maybe it's better to cash out some of my profits um, and move my money to something safer. So it's always important to verify the information, check a couple of sources, especially if it's something that is likely to have huge impact on price. Yeah, make sure that before you start doing making any trades, make sure that you verify that information that's definitely true and then try to find few different sources of information that you like so <clears throat> for example one youtuber may be really good at uh, technical analysis and long-term market predictions or movements someone else may be really good at researching small uh, cap altcoins um, someone else may be looking at always at what's fresh and interesting such as NFTs or DeFi or whatever else. Um, one person will be posting or uh, putting videos up every day. Someone else may post it, I don't know, once a week or even once a month. Um, so it's important that you have few good different sources of information so you can all together build a good idea of what the market is doing. That's pretty much everything I want to talk about today. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or any ideas for future videos, please let me know in the comments and see you next time. Thank you.